Taifa does not own the referees. Taifa does not own the referees. As a matter of fact, the organizations themselves hire the referees and pay the referees during the season. They are not Taifa referees. That's the referees are 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 from Tasso, the Texas Association of Sports Athletics, or something like that. I, I don't. I can't even tell you what Tasso stands for. Well, someone tried to call in and hung up. Already scaring them off. So first and foremost, let's get this clear. Taifa does not own or run the referees. And maybe that's a point of debate that we should have. Should Taifa employ their own referees for these games? Maybe that's the question we'll ask right there. Should Taifa hire their own referees? The different chapters have a group of referees that they use exclusively exclusively for Taifa games. And more importantly, would you be willing to pay for them? Because in order to get a referee to be exclusive to the league, don't think you're going to have to put out some money for that. That's the, that's the, don't think you're not going to put some money out for it. But as of right now, these referees are not owned, they're not run by the Texas Youth Football Association. They're not owned or run by the Typho, by the Typho board at all. Hi, Typho Radio, you're on the air. Hey, Kenny. Kenny. This is Alex. Alex. Alex, what's going on? Kenny, I know we're all mocking mocking this gentleman gentleman that was on his his phone. phone. And I, by no means, am defending this this man man for being on his his phone. phone. But I got got, got got to play devil's devil's advocate advocate here. here. What if this man truly has a family emergency that he's got to have his phone at with? He's got a dying, dying mother, mother, dying son. son. I don't know. God, God forbid, forbid any of that happen. happen. And they and tell they him at any time, time we, have we have to call you for this emergency. Let's, let's assume, assume that this play hadn't, hadn't gone off. off. They were they breaking were huddle, huddle. And he and got, got that, that buzz. buzz and he looked, looked at it. And that's when they snapped the picture. Have we thought about that possibility? Well, of course not on social media. Of course not. Because that's like I said, it's nothing but a bunch of keyboard warriors that look for any kind of excuse to attack an individual or an entity. In this case, the referee and Taifa. And see, absolutely. And, and you're kind of alluding to what I was leading up to because I did speak to the head of referees in San Antonio. I called him up. I have his number. We talked about it. He'd already knew about it. He'd already been contacted about it. And he spoke to the referee. So all, all of you, uh, while you're on the phone here, Alex, and while everybody's listening right now, here's the reason why that referee was on his phone. The, one of the coaches on the sideline asked him for the time. He did not have a watch, was keeping the time of the game on his phone. <laughs> and, but yet, yeah, we're, 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 we're so, so fast, fast and quick, and quick to judge this poor man, man for probably playing on Facebook. Exactly. And, and that was exactly the comments that were blasted all over social media. The exact comments that were blasted all over social media. Blaming the referee, blaming the league. You know, look at this guy. How is he watching out for the safety of our kids? Well, tell your coaches not to ask for the time of the game right when the play goes off. How about that? Maybe you should, you should be asking that well before they come to the line to snap the ball. Now, I will tell you, I'll tell you, the head of the Kenny, referee it is, is no different. different. Go ahead. Go ahead. The head of the referees did acknowledge, and the referee involved did acknowledge, that he didn't have a watch. He should have had a watch. And when he had to keep the time of the game, all he had was his phone. Going forward, he's going to make sure he has a watch. Because just for this reason right there. 
it. You got it. And and Shane, you know, Shane uh-huh. saying that he should have. That, that was my point. Yeah, he should have told the, the the coach to wait. Well, yeah, maybe the play hadn't gone off yet. Maybe he thought he could bring it up real quick as the play was getting ready to start, and he could look up. It didn't happen that way. The play went off. Someone snapped the picture and threw it all over Facebook. And, and that comes into question. What are your What is your goal when you're standing on the sidelines? Are you there with your phone out and ready to take any little picture? Well, nowadays uh, there is coaches that are doing that, and uh, they feel they can get an advantage. They can snap any kind of picture that doesn't meet their their standards. Well, yeah, that, that that's the reason I was given. Now, I, I can't say if it's true or not, but you know, when I I've talked to the head of referees, and I've known him for several years, and uh, I, I'm not going to sit there and and say he's lying to me, or that the referee lied to him. But that was the reason that was given. The problem here is everybody's so quick to jump. Everybody's so quick to go on social media and blast something. And if you notice, I didn't make a single comment about it because I was going to go to the, the people involved and find out first before I make any comment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for the phone call, Kenny. No problem. And I'm already seeing the comments just here. Again, again, 979-353-4421. Peter Dame says that's bull. You say it's not true. You tell me what proof you have that it's not true, Pete. 979-353-4421. Vincent Michael, same thing with you. You're, you're calling BS. Were you there? Were you there at that very moment? Were you on that sideline? And it doesn't matter who the picture came from. The point is, it, it decided to be posted on social media and, and thrown out there without knowing the facts. And I've already admitted, and I'll admit it, I don't know if this is the actual true facts. This is the explanation I was given. I saw someone say something, they should keep a real game clock. Okay, well, what's a real game clock to you? Because if your field is not in an actual stadium where you actually have use of a billboard clock, Referees keep the time on the field. There have been numerous times that I've done games broadcasting live on Tiger Radio where I didn't have a press box. There was no place for me to set up, no power. Therefore, I broadcast this game on the field from my phone. Now, I'm out there on the field with the kids calling the game from my cell phone. My cell phone's in my hand. I have yet to see a picture of me looking on my cell phone, saying, oh, well, what's he doing? Facebooking while he's doing the game? Ain't nobody done that to me. Now, again, I'm not saying this explanation is true or not. This is just the explanation officially that was given to me. And I was even told the referee himself did acknowledge that he should have had a regular watch on. He forgot it, didn't have it, and used his cell phone to keep the time for the game. Well, Shane, you've had, you apparently haven't been in enough games because uh, actually you're wrong, Shane. You're wrong because even in the game that I did for you against the JYSF Venom. Even despite the fact that you had a clock operator and you had a big billboard clock to use, how many times was that clock wrong? How many times did they have to uh, force that clock to get started because it was a kid or somebody, whoever was up there running it? It wasn't an official that was running the clock. And in order to correct the clock, guess who was keeping the time? It was one of the line judges. It wasn't the white hat. It was one of the line judges. By all means, you want to put pictures of me on my cell phone calling a game on the field? By all means, do it. And I invite anybody that sees me 
and wants proof that I can broadcast from my phone, I'll show you right then and there. I could do it right now if I wanted to. I could do this show from my cell phone. Here's the recording platform right there that I use on my cell phone. has all my commercials and everything right there that I can play. Those of you that have listened to Game Day, maybe you'll recognize this. Right there live on my phone that I can broadcast from. So by all means, if you want to take a picture of me, Talk about what I'm doing wrong. Do it. Go for it. Bring it. Again, I'm not saying it, it, it's the absolute truth. That was the, the official explanation I was giving by the head of the referees. He's already spoken to this referee. They've already acknowledged the fact that he should have had a regular watch just to avoid this kind of situation right here. And Richard Lopez, you're exactly correct. And actually during um, the playoffs, particularly in the semifinals, I think it's quarterfinals, semifinals, and the um, and of course championships, the clock is operated by an official. At that level at that time, the clock is operated by official that if there is actually billboard clock to be used. So there you go. There's your explanation on, on the referee picture. So if you got any more questions about it, by all means, you know, send me an email, text me, whatever. If you want to take a picture of me, by all means, go ahead. It's Josh Valenzuela asked a question on Facebook, as you can see it, uh, asking if cell phones are allowed on the field in Texas here in Michigan, if the clock is not working, ref use a cell phone. It, it, that's not even the question. It is. Um, that's not the issue. The issue is just somebody posted the picture of this referee with the cell phone, uh, looking at his cell phone right when a play was going on and blew it up and talked about how horrible they were, blah, 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 in the league. Yeah, this and that, and that, and that doesn't matter anymore. So we gave you the explanation. If you can believe it, if you want, if you don't want to believe it, that's up to you as well. But people ask me about it. People ask me to check into it. Wanted me to, to come up with an answer on it. I came up with the answer that was given to me. <clears throat> that's where we're at with it. All right. Moving on. We're going to take a look at some of these scores from around the league. We're going to start off Division 2 in the flag. The top 10 in Division 2 flag. Here you go at number 10. Still at 1-0. and 0, It is the Rio Hondo Bobcats. I'm sure they got some games to make up after all the rain issues we've had here in South Texas. At number 9 at 2-0, it's the North Crowley Panthers. Number 8, it's the Ed Calchelsa Little Jackets. At number 7, it's the RGB Bulls at 2-0. and 0. Number 6, it's the Lubbock Texans at 3-0. and 0. Your top 5. 3-0, it's the Midland Horn Frogs. At number four, it's 3-0, the New Era Indians. The Hamilton Park Bobcats at number three at 3-0. Texas Spartans at, at number two. They're 3-0. And the Atascosa Aggies, 164 points on offense and yet to allow a score on defense. They are number one in Division II flag. Moving on to the Tykes, top 10. At number 10, it's the Atascosa Aggies at 3-1. The top 10 now here in Division II Tykes. No longer has nothing but offers. 3-1 at number 10 is the Atascosa Aggies. At number 9, 3-1, it's the West Texas Falcons. At number 8, 1-0, oh, it's still the Rio Hondo Bobcats. Still need to make up games. Somerset Fighting Bulldogs at 2-0. Oh. They're at number seven. At number six, Ed Couch Elsa Little Jackets. At number five, it's the Southeast Junior Hornets at 2-0. and And they've got a shutout going for the season. 
points on offense, zero points.